Hi friends, how are you? Today we are going to discuss some topics in chemistry classes. Solution chapter, solution in your plus two chemistry talk. Okay, two to three marks are probably asked in this chapter for your NEET and JE exams. Very important chapter in plus two classes. Okay, what is a solution? You all know that you are learned very well in this chapter. So tell me, what is a solution? A simple question. You are all know what is a solution? A solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more components. First component is a we call solvent, and second component we call as solute. The component present in largest quantity is called as solvent, and the component present in small quantity is known as solute. These two, solvent and solute. Composed of solution or solution composed of solvent plus solute. In this chapter, we will discuss only about binary solutions. Binary solutions means only two components is present. Okay, solvent plus solute is equal to solution. Okay, then we break this chapter into seven topics. First one, types of solution. Second one, expressing concentration. Third one, solubility. Fourth one, vapor pressure. Fifth one, ideal and a non-ideal solution. And sixth one, colligative properties. And last one, abnormal molecular mass. Okay, very very simple topic. You are all know. You are all learned very 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 well for your exams. And come to first topic, types of solution. What is a solution or what is a type of solution? There are three types of solution. First one is, first one is solid solutions. Second one is liquid solution, and last one is gaseous solution. Okay, solid solution means solid in solid, liquid in solid, and gas in solid. Liquid solution means liquid in liquid, solid in liquid, and gas in liquid. And gaseous solution means solid in gas liquid in gas and you just go through these examples then come to next topic expressing concentration expressing concentration concentration there are many types of many terms to express concentration in chemistry okay first one mass percentage volume percentage mass by volume percentage parts per million mole fraction molarity and molality okay come to discuss you just write some lecture notes or you just this write these points or these equations in your notebook that is very useful for your studies okay first thing we discuss this chapter then some practice some questions for you okay first one mass percentage mass percentage means mass of component in solution divided by total mass of solution into 100 mass of component in solution divided by total mass of solution into 100 then volume percentage volume of component divided by total volume of solution into 100 these are pers expressing in percentage 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 means into 100 percentage means into 100 mass percentage mass of component into the in solution divided by total mass of solution into 100 for example 10 percentage glucose in water means 10 percentage glucose in water means means 10 gram of glucose present in 90 gram of water. 10 percentage, 10 percentage glucose in, 10 percentage urea means 10 gram of, 10 gram of urea present in 90 gram of water. Then volume percentage, volume of component divided by total volume of solution into 100. Okay, very very simple this two Next terms are very similar mass percentage and the volume percentage. Let next we come to the topic parts per million ppm. We short we use ppm parts per million, which expressing 10 raised to 6, 
very important 10 raised to 6 parts per million is equal to number of parts of component divided by total number of parts of all component into 10 raised to 6 number of parts of component divided by total number of parts of all component into 100 these parts per million we use these parts per million only when solute concentration is very low solute concentration is very low then we use parts per million then mole fraction very important topic very important term mole fraction very important topic in this chapter is mole fraction mole fraction means the denote mole fraction as chi or x chi denoted as chi okay then equation mole fraction na by na plus n what is na number of moles of one component Na plus Nb, Na divided by Na plus Nb, mole fraction is equal to number of moles of one component divided by total number of moles of all component in. Okay, Adam. No mole fraction is equal to number of moles of one component divided by total number of moles of all components. Na divided by Na plus Nb. Okay, x chi is equal to x1 plus x2 is equal to 1 x1 plus x2 is equal to 1 x1 is a mole fraction of component 1 and x2 is a mole fraction of component 2 it is a very important relation related to mole fraction then come to the next topic molarity molarity and molality very important terms that you studied in First chapter of plus one, some basic concept of chemistry. These all topics you study were there in plus one, some basic concept of chemistry. Molarity, what do you mean by molarity? Molarity means number of moles of solute divided by volume of solution in liter. Number of moles of solute divided by volume of solution in liter. Molality means number of moles of solute divided by mass of solvent in kilogram. Molality is equal to number of moles of solute divided by mass of solvent in kilogram. Here volume of solution in liter, here mass of solvent in kilogram. That is the difference between molarity and the molality. In this, parts per million, mole fraction, molality and molality are very important. Here, parts per million, mole fraction, molarity, which are based on masses, which are based on, sorry, molarity, which are based on masses, and molarity, which is based on volume, okay, which is based on volume. So, molarity depends on temperature, molarity depends on temperature because volume depends on temperature molarity depends on temperature and this part for million mole fraction and the molality does not depends on temperature because because mass does not mass does not depends on temperature okay these terms very very important you just write in your notebook then come to the next topic of solubility what is solubility what is a solubility for example you just uh, add some salt or sugar to a cup of water to a glass of water and mix it your sugar is mixed well and the amount of solvent amount of solute that is mixed with. okay solute the uh, amount of solvent or sorry amount of solute dissolved in a liquid or a solvent the, that amount is called a solubility which how much amount that is solubility okay come to the next topic solubility what is a solubility solubility is the maximum amount of solute that can be dissolved in a solvent okay the solubility solubility for example a sugar solution sugar is mixed well with as water and we make sugar solution the solubility of sugar depends on many factors or solubility of Solute in a solvent depends on many factors. First one, nature. Nature of solvent, nature of solvent and solute. We know that polar solute, polar solute dissolved in polar solvent. Polar solute dissolved, dissolved in 
polar solvents polar for example nacl is a polar solute and water is a polar solvent and we know that nacl dissolve in water another example non polar solute dissolve in a non polar solvent for example in a benzaphthalene we know that naphthalene naphthalene and androzine androzine dissolve only in benzene or non polar solvents but androzine or naphthalene does not dissolve in water androzine or naphthalene does not dissolve water or or nacl or sugar does not dissolve in uh, sorry nacl does not dissolve in benzene because benzene is a non polar solvent and sugar nacl is a polar solute so like dissolves like di like dissolves like is a which is a nature of solvent and a solute come to the next point temperature 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 what is the dependence of temperature on solubility we know that a process is endothermic a process is endothermic a process is endothermic a process is endothermic that is delta h greater than 0 then increase in temperature increase in temperature increases solubility increase in temperature increases solubility if a reaction is endothermic that is delta h greater than 0 then increase in temperature increases solubility that is a very very important point then a reaction is exothermic exothermic what is endothermic endothermic what is endothermic that is that is evolve gain heat or the reaction require the heat okay then exothermic what is an exothermic reaction delta h less than 0 delta h less than 0 that is delta h less than 0 that is a uh, heat is evolved from the system heat is evolved from the system exo 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 okay endo and exo endo okay that is a relation okay for an exothermic reaction delta h less than 0 increase in temperature increase in temperature decreases solubility increase in temperature decreases solubility increase in temperature decreases solubility this is a very important topic in this area area of solubility of solubility of solid in liquid solid in liquid very very important solid in liquid solid in liquid solid in liquid that is why temperature depends on the nature okay temperature and nature then pressure what is the difference uh, depends of pressure pressure there is there is no dependence of pressure on solubility of solid in liquid there is no dependence of uh, pressure on solubility of solid in liquid okay very simple topic uh, just then solubility of solid in liquid polar solvents polar solute dissolve in polar solvents and a non polar solute dissolve in non polar solvents then temperature temperature in uh, the process is an endothermic then increase in temperature increases solubility the process is exothermic the increase in temperature decreases solubility of solubility of solid in liquid that is important solubility of solid in liquid then pressure pressure has no dependence on solubility of solid in liquid next come to the topic of solubility of solubility of gas in liquid solubility of gas in liquid solubility of gas in liquid what is the dependence of temperature and pressure here very very important is pressure when a, a solvent uh, like a liquid solvent is 
taken in a container and uh, we apply a gas we apply we uh, dissolve a gas in this liquid and we apply pressure we apply pressure then gas dissolve very easily in this liquid so solubility of gas in liquid solubility of gas in liquid increases with increase in pressure increase in pressure so this is a increasing symbol that you know okay solubility of solubility of gas in liquid increases with the increase in pressure solubility of gas in solubility of gas in liquid increases with the increase in pressure there is a famous law relating to this that is that is henry's law henry's law that we all know that what is henry's law pressure partial pressure partial pressure of gas in liquid gas in vapor phase is directly proportional to mole fraction in liquid phase partial pressure is directly proportional to mole fraction partial pressure is directly proportional to mole fraction p is equal to k h into x k h into k k h into mole fraction this k h is called a henry's constant this k h is constant henry's constant p is partial pressure and x is mole fraction x is mole fraction when k h increases this is the important point for your entrance exams k h increases solubility 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 decreases k h increases solubility decreases this is important what k h decreases solubility decreases k h increases solubility decreases okay this is a solubility of gas in liquid solubility of gas in liquid then next is temperature dependence of solubility of gas in liquid temperature dependence of solubility of gas in liquid we know that gas dissolved in liquid so gas condensed condensed okay condensed then increase in temperature increase in temperature increase in temperature decreases solubility increase in temperature decrease in solubility because because solubility of gas in liquid gas in liquid gas come to uh, converted to liquid that is condensation condensation so solubility of gas in liquid increase in decreases with the increase in temperature okay these are very important topic you just uh, write down in your notebook and then refer okay okay come to the next topic vapor pressure of liquid in liquid or vapor pressure what is a pre vapor pressure vapor pressure is a pressure exerted by the vapor on the surface of a liquid on the surface of a liquid okay then come to the topic vapor pressure of a liquid in liquid consider a binary solution consider a binary solution the two components are in vaporized very well then the pressure exerted on component 1 is p1 and the pressure exerted or vapor pressure by component 2 is p2 then total vapor pressure is p total p total then the mole fraction of component 1 is x1 and the mole fraction of component is x2 okay mole fraction of component is x2 mole fraction of component is x2 the relation between mole fraction and the vapor pressure is given by the sign is rounds then the law is known as raoult's law raoult's law raoult's law raoult's law that is all we know that very important law in this chapter solution raoult's law now what is the raoult's law what is it says raoult's law vapor pressure vapor pressure is directly proportional to mole fraction partial vapor pressure is directly proportional to mole fraction partial vapor pressure is directly proportional to mole fraction this k is mole fraction p is the partial vapor pressure then for example p p1 is the partial pressure of partial vapor pressure of component 1 and 
which is directly proportional to mole fraction x1 and the p2 is directly proportional to mole fraction x2 then we then proportionality constant p1 is equal to p01 chi1 p01 chi1 where p0 is the partial vapor pressure of pure component p01 is the partial partial vapor pressure of pure component pure component partial vapor pressure of pure component and the uh, p0 is the partial vapor pressure of pure component p1 is the vapor pressure of component in solution that is the point so rawls according to rawls law rawls law says that partial pressure is directly proportional to partial pressure is directly proportional to mole fraction we have the equation p1 is equal to p01 x1 p01 x1 and p p2 is equal to p02 x2 and p total p total is equal to p1 plus p2 p1 plus p2 this all know we are learned this very well in this chapter then comes a graph which is mole fraction against the mole fraction against the partial vapor pressure partial vapor pressure here it is a uh, graph of p2 and this is graph of p1 p1 and p2 total vapor pressure p total is equal to p1 plus p2 this is a graph for an ideal solution this is a graph for an ideal solution what is an ideal solution that we that i teach in next topic okay this is a partial vapor pressure of liquid in liquid liquid in liquid okay come to the next topic vapor pressure of solid in liquid vapor pressure of solid in liquid what is the vapor pressure vapor pressure is a pressure exerted by the vapor at the surface of a liquid vapor pressure is a pressure exerted by the vapor at the surface of a liquid in a pure solvent in a pure solvent only solvent molecule are present this solvent molecule is a volatile volatile means which can evaporate easily so solvent molecule gets evaporated and a pressure is exerted from the to the surface okay come to the point solution here solvent molecule as well as solute molecules is present then come to a main point come to conclude we conclude that vapor pressure of solution vapor pressure of solution at the at a given temperature is less than that of pure solvent at the same temperature vapor pressure of solution at a given temperature is less than that of solvent at the at the same temperature because in solution the surface of the solution fraction of surface covered by solvent molecule is less than that of solvent so pure solvent because in this surface we we know that here black and white dots because black dot is solute molecules red dot is red dot is solvent molecule in solution the surface covered by the solvent molecule is less so surface covered by the solvent molecule is less so evaporation of vapor molecule is less so pressure exerted by the vapor is low hence we conclude that vapor pressure of solute vapor pressure of solution at a given temperature is less than that of vapor pressure of a solution at a given temperature is less than that of solvent at the same temperature okay very simple point come to the next topic ideal and non ideal solution what is an ideal solution an ideal solution an ideal solution which obeys rawls law over entire range of concentration that is an ideal solution why is what is an ideal solution an ideal solution is a solution which obeys 
Raoul's law over entire range of concentration, then what is a non-ideal solution? A non-ideal solution which does not obey Raoul's law over entire range of concentration, does not obey Raoul's law. Ideal solution obeys Raoul's law. Okay, then come to ideal solution. An ideal solution which obey Raoul's law. This is a vapor pressure versus molar mole fraction graph for an ideal solution. Very important graph. Then for an ideal solution, delta x mix is equal to zero and delta v mix is equal to zero. Very important point. Delta x mix is equal to zero and delta v mix is equal to zero. Then for an ideal solution, a b interaction. A means solvent. B means Solute AB interaction almost equal to AA and BB interaction. So, which obeys ideal slow? So, which obeys road slow? For example, benzene plus toluene. Another example is chlorobenzene and bromobenzene. Next, come to topic non ideal solution. What is a non ideal solution? A non-ideal solution is a solution which does not obey Raoult's law or entire range of concentration. This non-ideal solution we we divided into two groups: positive deviation and the negative deviation. Positive deviation and the negative deviation. The graph which shows positive deviation from the Raoult's law is called a non-ideal the solution with the positive deviation which shows negative deviation from Raoult's law is known as negative deviation for positive deviation for non-ideal solution shows positive deviation delta x mix greater than zero and delta v mix greater than zero and a b interaction solvent solute interaction is very less than very 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 less than that of solvent solvent and solute solute interaction and the example is acetone plus ethanol for a non ideal solution example is ethanol plus sorry acetone plus ethanol next we come to negative deviation a negative deviation from no uh, Raoult's law means delta x less than zero and the delta v mix less than zero here delta x mix greater than zero and delta v mix greater than zero here delta here for a negative deviation delta x mix less than zero and delta v mix less than zero and solvent solute interaction is very very greater than solute solute and solvent solvent interaction and for example example for an ideal a negative deviation is acetone plus anilin you just write these all in your notebook and study well because this is very important point this is very important point for uh, in some exams they ask you about examples and this uh, this thermodynamic relation they ask and this interaction point is they may ask okay so this is very very important point you must write and study well this topic okay ideal and the non ideal solution and uh, another topic related to this is azeotropes azeotropes what is an ideal sorry what is an azeotrope an azeotrope is a binary mixture which its composition is same in liquid phase and the vapor phase its composition is same in in liquid phase and the vapor phase that is an azeotrope that is an azeotrope okay azeotrope an azeotrope is a binary solution and its composition is same in liquid and vapor phase and it boils at the constant temperature it boils at the constant temperature this is an azeotrope this is an azeotrope an azeotrope is a binary solution which is azeotropes azeotropes and azeotropes is a binary solution which composition is same in liquid phase and vapor phase and is it boils at a constant temperature. There are two types of azeotrope. Minimum boiling azeotropes and the maximum boiling azeotrope. Minimum boiling azeotrope means which shows 
positive deviation from Raoult's law. Minimum boiling azeotrope. Minimum boiling azeotrope means positive deviation from Raoult's law. Maximum boiling azeotrope means negative deviation from Raoult's law. Okay, minimum means positive, maximum means negative. Minimum boiling azeotrope means positive deviation from Raoult's law and the maximum boiling azeotrope means negative deviation from Raoult's law. These all topics are very important for a meet and JE exam or other entrance exam. Okay, then study well and come to the next topic, colligative properties. This is last topic of this class. This Chapter colligative properties. What is a colligative properties? What is a colligative property? We have to study four types of colligative properties. One is relative lowering of vapor pressure. Second is elevation in boiling point. Third one is depression in freezing point. And fourth one is osmotic pressure. Come to the next topic. Colligative property. What is a colligative property? A colligative property means which depends only on number of solute particles and not its nature. This is a colligative property. A colligative property is a property which depends on number of solute particles and not on its nature. We have to study four colligative properties. First one, relative lowering of vapor pressure. Second one, elevation in boiling point. Third one, depression in freezing point. Fourth one, osmotic pressure. And these are very important and very important for your classes or your entrance exams. Okay. First one, relative lowering of vapor pressure. P01 minus P1 by P01 is equal to X2. What is a relative lowering of vapor pressure? What is relative lowering of vapor pressure? When a solute, solute is added to a solvent, its vapor pressure increase, decreases. That is relative lowering of vapor pressure. A solute molecule is added to a solvent and its vapor pressure decreases that is relative lowering of vapor pressure that relative lowering p01 p01 minus p1 by p01 is equal to x2 mole fraction of solute here 2 2 1 represent for solvent 1 represent for solvent and 2 represent for solute Okay, 1 represent for solvent and 2 represent for solute. Equation P01 minus P1 divided by P01 is equal to W2 into M1 divided by M2 into W1. Here, P01 means, what is P01? P01 means, P01 means vapor pressure of pure solvent. Vapor pressure of pure solvent and P1 means vapor pressure of solution and W2 means W2 means mass of solute W2 means mass of solute and M1 means molecular mass of solvent and the M2 means M2 means what is M2 molecular mass of solute and W1 means W1 means weight of weight of mass of mass of what is mass of solvent okay mass of solvent mass of solvent then Come to the point, from this we can calculate mass of solute. We can rearrange this equation and then we can calculate mass of solute. We can get from the equation, from the question that what is a relative lowering? What is a relative lowering? Then substitute this here and calculate M2, M2 or mass, molecular mass of solute. This is a very good representation. Okay, come to the next tip. Elevation of boiling point. Elevation in boiling point. Elevation in boiling point. What is elevation? Elevation means increasing. Elevation means increasing. So, increase in boiling point. Increase in point, boiling point. Delta dB means elevation in boiling point. Difference in boiling point. dB means 
boiling point of solution and TB0 means boiling point of solvent. From this equation we get that, we get that boiling point of solution is greater than that of pure solvent. Boiling point of solute is boiling point of solute allah sorry boiling point of boiling point of solution is greater than that of greater than that of solvent boiling point of solution is greater than that of solution then we have elevation in boiling point delta tb is equal to tb minus tb0 then we have an equation Elevation in boiling point is directly proportional to molality. Elevation in boiling point is directly proportional to molality. Elevation in boiling point is directly proportional to molality. And delta Tb is equal to Kb into M. What is Kb? What is Kb? Elevation in boiling point constant. Boiling point constant. What is Kb? So what is Kb? Kb means elevation in boiling point constant or, or, or molar elevation constant or ebulloscopic constant what is kb kb means ebulloscopic constant molar elevation constant so we can calculate molecular mass of solute from this equation by rearranging this equation delta tb is equal to KB into 1000 into W2 divided by M2 into W1. Very, very important equation this, in, this, in this topic. Next, depression in freezing point. What is depression? What is depression? This is a depression. Or decrease. Decrease in freezing point. Depression means it decrease. Decrease in freezing point. Decrease in freezing point. Then depression in freezing point delta Tf is equal to Tf0 minus Tf. Tf0 means Tf0 means freezing point of pure solvent. Freezing point of pure solvent and Tf means freezing point of freezing point of solution. Then delta Tf is equal to del Tf0 minus Tf. From this we can get that both freezing point of freezing point of pure solvent is greater than that of solution. Boiling point of pure solvent is greater than that of solution. Both freezing sorry freezing point of pure solvent is greater than that of solution. Delta Tf is equal to Tf0 minus Tf. Boiling point of pure, sol pure solvent is boiling pure point of pure solvent is sorry, boiling or not? Freezing point. Freezing point of pure solvent is greater than that of solution. Hence delta Tf is equal to Tf0 minus Tf. Then the proportion delta Df depression in freezing point is directly related to molality. Molality. Then delta Df is equal to Kf into M. Delta Tf is equal to Kf into M. Here Kf is a proportionality constant, and it is called as freezing point depression constant or molar depression constant or cryoscopic constant. Kf is called a cryoscopic constant. Kb is called a ebulloscopic constant. Kb is called a ebulloscopic constant and Kf is called a cryoscopic constant. Okay. Then delta Tf is equal to Kf into 1000 into W2 divided by M2 into W1. From this equation we can calculate molecular mass of solute. We can calculate molecular mass of solute. Then come to the next colligative properties that is osmotic pressure. What is an osmotic pressure? We know that the a mango is dipped in a sugar water. A mango is dipped in a sugar water. A mango is dipped in a sugar water. The mango is swiveled due to osmosis. Mango is 
just shrivel due to osmosis then what is an osmosis osmosis is a flow of solvent molecule through a semi permeable membrane osmosis is a flow of molecule through a water molecule sorry a solvent molecule through a semi permeable membrane osmosis is a osmosis is a flow of solvent molecule through a semi permeable membrane not solute molecule solvent molecules flows from higher concentration to lower concentration of solvent through a semi permeable membrane is called osmosis or or solvent molecules flows from lower concentration to higher concentration of solution of solution okay this is osmosis this is osmosis the pressure exerted to stop this osmosis is called osmotic pressure osmotic pressure is directly pro proportional to molarity these two are proportional to proportional to molarity and osmotic pressure are related to proportional to molarity pi is equal to crt pi is equal to crt or c is molarity or c is molarity and pi is equal to w2 rt by m2v w2 rt by m2v this is a osmotic pressure this is a osmotic pressure these osmotic pressure are very useful for calculating molecular mass of proteins and micromolecules micromolecules and proteins or biomolecules and proteins we can calculate molecular mass very easily by using osmotic pressure of biomolecules and proteins etc okay these are for colligative properties these equations are very very important in your exams and you must study this equation you must by heart this equation or you must connect this equation with some in your own idea okay last topic of this chapter abnormal molecular mass abnormal molecular mass what is an abnormal molecular mass okay for example if ionic solution kcl which dissolve in a solvent like water which dissociate into k plus and cl minus k plus plus and cl minus kcl is a kcl is an electrolyte and which dissociate in an aqueous solution and which gets k plus and cl minus okay kcl gives k plus and cl minus here only one here two ions are present then its molecular mass or its colligative property may change its boiling point may change okay then another example uh, this is dissociation okay this is dissociation dissociation another example is for an acetic acid for an acetic acid ch3 co oh and in an acetic acid which dimerize which dimerize what is dimerization which is jump together which is a which is connect together we have what is dimerization which connects together okay first one first in a solution only one acetic acid molecule is present and in solution it will become dimerized and this is called association the what is dimerization dimerization means association of molecules association this is which this acetic acid is dimerized okay this acetic acid is dimerized and in association and dissociation in the in the process of association and dissociation the colligative property may change the colligative property may change and its molecular mass also change this change is called abnormal molecular mass this change may called abnormal molecular mass to to overcome this abnormal abnormality we may introduce a factor called i van hoff factor van hoff van hoff factor we introduce a factor called van hoff factor i van hoff factor i is equal to normal molar mass normal molar mass normal 
molar mass divided by abnormal molar mass abnormal molar mass abnormal molar mass van hoff factor i is introduced to overcome the abnormality in molecular mass these abnormalities is shown or introduced or shown by association and dissociation process the i is equal to normal molecular mass divided by abnormal molecular mass and they also observed colligative property divided by calculated colligative property or i is equal to observed colligative observed colligative property observed colligative property divided by observed colligative property divided by calculated colligative property calculated colligative property colligative property these are equation to calculate van hoff factor or in a dissociation of strong electrolytes for example nacl which is which dissociate into na plus plus cl minus there are two ions there are two ions one is na plus and other is cl minus hence van hoff factor i is equal to 2 in the case of nacl in the case of nacl in the case of mgcl2 mgcl2 which dissociate into mg plus plus 2 cl minus so mg and 2 cl minus is van hoff factor is 3 its van hoff factor is 3 another example al2 so4 thrice aluminum sulfate which dissociate into 2 al3 plus plus 3 so4 2 minus hence i van hoff factor i is equal to 5 because here two aluminum atoms sorry ions 2 al3 plus ions and 3 so4 2 minus ions hence its van hoff factor a i is 5 so we can calculate van hoff factor of a strong electrolyte like this okay very simple trick very very important this this point is very important in your exams and in our we practice these are these are questions these are topic questions related to this all topic and we must the master of this chapter solution okay then come to the problem part first you are study well this chapter and this can come to the problem part and first we just write a problem here and and its options then uh, you must you must write this question and and just listen to my class and i explain how it can be calculated then you may you can write this on your notebook okay then i come to our problem section